G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, Sunday here in Australia, the weekend is upon us and it seems we are having a little bit of a pullback in at least some kinds, but I mean there's really good moves in other ones. But it has sort of paused a little bit for Bitcoin. I mean, you know, we're still hanging under that $50,000 mark and we're waiting to see are we going to break higher or are we going to break lower. And very similar with Ethereum in all honesty, it's, you know, hovering underneath that $2,000 mark and we're just waiting to see, are we gonna go higher or are we gonna go lower? You can just have a look at these two seven day patterns and they actually are quite similar for Ethereum and Bitcoin. I really don't know exactly what's gonna happen. If I had to take a guess, and that's all it is because no one really knows what's going to happen in the market. I think Ethereum and Bitcoin, they've just been kind of coiled up for a little while. I think they are getting ready to break to the upside. But now that I've said that, prepare yourselves for Monday morning. There's probably going to be a big dump and it'll do just what it wants to do to try and prove me and other people wrong. Look, it's happened before and it'll happen again. I don't actually know what's going to happen. I can just take an educated guess and I don't see any big dumps coming at the moment. I think there's still too many institutions trying to get in and we haven't even got the real retail FOMO yet. Don't get me wrong, there's retail here, but I don't think we've got the real retail FOMO yet. We'll have to wait and see though. All right, we can see $1.5 trillion. We are kind of holding that mark right now, which is good. BTC dominance down in the 58% bracket. ETH dominance has actually dropped because it was up in the 14%, only by a little bit, but that means the other altcoins are really starting to pump. And I mean, have a look at the gas fees at the moment. They're just awful. You can't do anything on Ethereum at the moment if you're not prepared to pay anywhere from $20 to $100 in gas fees. And again, I go over this every day, but I just... Layer 2 cannot come quick enough. I just literally cannot wait for it. Uh, it's very sad that, you know, I can't use any of the platforms that I want to. Aave, Synthetix, Kyber Network. I am trying to get Synthetix sorted out so I can get onto their Layer 2, but I'm having issues with that. So anyway, that's another story for another day. All right, what's really pumped though? Because there has been coins that have pumped and they've pumped real hard. So have a look at that dash up 46% in 24 hours. Ethereum Classic of all things, there you go. Lisk, out of the doldrums, just came from nowhere. This was really big back in 2017, then it just died and I've hardly heard anything from it. But again, this is something that slightly concerns me is now basically everything is pumping. That does feel like late 2017. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. I do think Ethereum, uh, well, hopefully Ethereum, but I definitely think Bitcoin is gearing up to go on another big run. And when it does, I think it'll drain a lot of these profits out of the altcoins. But we'll have to wait and see. So, I mean, some great gains. And look, it's just triple digits for some of them. Lisk, 100% in seven days, 30% in 24 hours. Still going up now as we speak. Same for Ethereum Classic, 80% seven days, 36% 24 hours and still going up now. So some really great you know, returns. And this is why we're here in the crypto space for these good returns. But I just know that they don't last forever. I don't want to create FUD. I just hope everybody is taking some profits. And as I said the other day, for me, I sold 10% of my entire crypto stash. So it's only 10%. That's a pretty small amount. I didn't get a whole lot of money out of it. But if they continue to go higher, then that's still okay because I sold everything for a profit. I didn't sell anything for a loss. So I made money. And if they continue to go higher, then I'll continue to sell a little bit more when I'm ready. But if they do happen to go lower, well, then I've got cash on the side ready to deploy and buy things, uh, what I would consider a discount. So that was my strategy. I never offer financial advice. You need to work out what's best for you. All right, what about what's dumped? Has anything really dumped? Nah. Nothing's really dumped. I mean, 12%, but now it's going back up again, and that's after it's gone up 100 and basically 40, 50% over seven days. No one's crying from any of these, really. Well, unless you bought the very top, then you will be a little bit. But anyway, hopefully you've done some research and understand the cycles. So these are all single-digit losses, except for Avalanche here, and again, they still had a great seven days. So nothing to worry about too much. All right. What I thought I'd do is I'd bring back in some of the indicators that I use. So we can see here, not too long ago in January, Bitcoin finally came back and bounced off the 50-day moving average. Now, what I also noticed was that we haven't touched 
The 200 day moving average since April last year, it's been almost a year. Now, traditionally in bull markets, uh, it's quite reg does this quite regularly. So at the moment, we haven't done it for a while and we haven't touched the 100 day moving average uh, since October last year. So very, very interesting. It seems the 50 day moving average at the moment is the sort of key indicator for, you know, where you're gonna find a bounce and it has been for a while. Now it wasn't here, but it kind of bounced here, almost came back and bounced here, did bounce here, did bounce here. So this means we're in super bullish territory. But again, if we were to come back to the 200 day moving average, doesn't mean we're not in bullish territory anymore. It's quite normal for Bitcoin and the greater market to obviously come back uh, and bounce off this in a bull market at least a couple of times. So, so far, I guess we've maybe only sort of done it once. We'll have to wait and see. I mean, there is talk that maybe these cycles are different. And look, I feel they are different, but they're still the same in some ways as well. So while they won't play out exactly the same as they have previously, it's still going to be somewhat similar. So I would expect at some stage we're going to come down and bounce off this 200 day moving average in this bull cycle. But if for whatever reason we don't, we're going to come back, hit this and continue lower. Again, I don't know if that's going to happen and I don't know whether it's going to happen. I just suspect that it will happen at some stage. But whether the next time we hit this is just when we are straight up in the next bear cycle or where we're going to have some sort of violent moves that will bring it down to bounce off here. I'm not sure. Again, with institutions and that getting in, I'm not sure if they'll let it get down to here because that really means that they would be selling off as well. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. All right. So some bad news, and this is what we have to watch out for in the cryptocurrency space in general, but definitely DeFi. So two protocols, Cream Finance and Alpha Finance, were both exploited in flash loans, and they lost $37.5 million. Now Alpha Finance says the loophole has been patched, but they their price has dumped 80% upon this news. So anyone who was holding Alpha Finance, this really isn't good. But in saying that, now there's maybe an opportunity to buy some alpha, alpha finance, but just be careful because it could dump more. They're saying it's been fixed. Who really knows? I guess unless you're a coder and you can go and check the code and all the rest of it, you can see whether it's been fixed. But this also could be a good opportunity because it's dumped basically 80% in the last 24 hours. It could be. I'm not saying it is. I never offer financial advice. It could be a good time to get in because the upside could be quite big from here but again the the downside could still be quite large you work out for yourself i'm not telling you what you should or shouldn't do right elon musk so the sec could go after him and investigate him i'm not sure how this is going to work exactly i mean he put out a couple of tweets but he did put out the tweets after it became obvious that tesla had bought into bitcoin so this could be the issue because that'll obviously you know create some fomo i guess and drive up the price from when he bought it because he could have bought it and said nothing and then maybe there was a big retracement and then they lose some money he did put out some tweets and the price you know i won't say skyrocketed but definitely went up from there so he's all he, tesla and possibly even him i suppose are automatically in profit right there and that could be seen as market manipulation but i mean you know i don't know lots of other companies come out and put out tweets and things and just because they put out tweets, provided they're not handing out information or saying something like, you know, Bitcoin's about to crash, you know, to then buy it on the cheap. Yeah, I don't know how that'll go. I don't think he's really done anything wrong there, but I'm not a regulator and all the rest of it. I don't know exactly what the laws are behind that, but we'll have to wait and see. I'm sure if he did get fined or something, he could probably handle the fine. It wouldn't be too much. And I doubt he's going to go to jail for a couple of tweets. And again, he wasn't really trying to short sell it or anything like that so all he did was saying i guess it was inevitable and yeah i don't know again we'll wait and see all right so more bullish news and this is someone who's copying the mayor of miami has come out and said he wants to move uh miami's into the bitcoin space is pretty much what he wants to do and now we've got a candidate candidate for new york trying to do exactly the same so former presidential candidate andrew yang is running for mayor of new york city he has promised that as a mayor, he would invest in making the city a hub for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Yang is also pro-universal basic income and wants 
uh, and wants to launch the largest basic income program in history. All right, what's interesting is New York is probably the hardest place to get a Bitcoin license in the States. That was really where people were trying to get over the line. So if he was to become mayor, would he suddenly make that a whole lot easier? I mean, things are changing anyway, but once upon a time, that was the hardest place to get a Bitcoin license was from New York where the stock exchange and everything was. And yeah, how times are changing because it was not that long ago that that was one of the biggest issues. And again, no one wants to be the first unless they're really smart and they do want to be the first. I, I think it's, I forget his first name, but something Suarez, who is the mayor of Miami, he's the first. He's gone, yep, we want to make Bitcoin a part of Miami. Well, look, now we've got a candidate for New York, so he doesn't have the job yet, but he's looking to do the same. Watch this to become the trend. There will be more places doing this. There will be big governments around the world that will start to do this. This is just the start of something that I believe, in my personal opinion, not financial advice, is going to be truly mind-blowing and life-changing. And not just for people who invest in Bitcoin, it's definitely going to change for them, but just everyone in general. The whole financial system, I believe, is about to change. It's about to completely flip and be completely different to what we are used to. Exciting times, and I'm looking forward to it. I'd love to know whether you're looking forward to it. And do you think that there's going to be more candidates, not so much candidates, but mayors and governments around the world start to say they're adopting Bitcoin? And again, I don't think it's going to be too long before there's countries that are adopting Bitcoin. I mean, we did have a look at that article yesterday from Colombia and their financial system is looking to introduce cryptocurrency. So they will be one of the sort of leaders, I guess, and it'll be some small country that will probably do it first. They'll make unbelievable gains and then the bigger countries will follow suit. That's my personal opinion anyway. Right, Ethereum 2.0. I still haven't got onto this. I, I keep meaning to, uh, but I haven't bought the uh, Avado, and that's the easiest way to stake that I've found. So ETH 2.0 is now secured by more than 3 million ETH. Now, that's still a small percentage of ETH, but it is continuing to, gr continuing to grow all the time. So I think I need to hurry up and get the Avado and start staking some uh, ETH 2.0. Love it. Love this whole proof of stake. Uh, I think it's a great concept and I think it's going to change yeah, things drastically for people in the future. And 3 million ETH, not too bad. I mean, there's a couple of hundred million ETH out there, so it's a pretty small amount in that regards, but it is constantly growing. And I think they said down here, it's basically $5.4 billion worth of Ethereum that is now locked up. So very interesting. All right. Stanley Morgan, eh? According to a recent report by Bloomberg, a unit of Morgan Stanley, so not Stanley Morgan, Morgan Stanley <laughs> Investment Management, called uh, Counterpoint Global, is exploring whether or not BTC would be a suitable option for its current, current investors. It will be and they will do it. Just watch. Sourcing people familiar with the matter, the report says that moving ahead with investment of the of the kind would require approval by regulators and the company itself. It is also worth noting that the review might also result in Morgan Stanley deciding to stay away from the big, oh sorry, from the cryptocurrency. This is possible. Again, I think there's going to be a number of places that are going to come in and look at the price and think they can wait around to get a cheaper price. And look, they might get lucky, but they might also get really unlucky and just never be able to buy in at a cheaper price and they're just going to have to pay more. You know, again, you know, there's so much talk out there. There's talk that we're going into a super cycle, and I've said this before. There's talk that maybe we move away from the four-year cycles that we've followed before because of institutions and the rest of it, and maybe we go on a 10-year cycle before there's any real big dip. So imagine going, we're not going to get into Bitcoin just yet. 50000 is too expensive. We're going to wait for a dip. And then the only dips that come is when we get to 100,000 and drops down to 80 or 70,000 and you just never get a chance to buy in cheaper and you just end up having to pay twice as much and get uh, two times less than what you could have originally got. I do think this is what is going to happen to a number of companies, but eventually when they see the big dips not coming, they'll just then sort of panic buy and FOMO buy. Uh, and again, yeah, they'll have to work out their own strategy. I'm not sure exactly how they're going to do it, but I do think waiting for a dip 
it's just fraught with danger at the moment. There's too much enthusiasm in the, mar the market and not that much into Bitcoin anymore. It's been moved more into the alts. I think the alts are going to, again, I think that will probably bleed off and it'll all go back into Bitcoin and maybe Ethereum. But I could be wrong. We'll wait and see. All right, last but not least. So synthetics. Today, Synthetic Asset Protocol announced a $12 million fundraise led by venture capital firms Paradigm, Coinbase Ventures, and IOSG. The funds purchase SNS tokens directly from the Dow Treasury and will contribute where possible by providing liquidity in the form of SNX collateral and also participate in its rapidly evolving community governance system. Yeah, that's what the announcement reads. We're excited about supporting the Synthetic DAO as it builds the leading synthetic asset platform, said Paradigm Investment Partner Arjun Balaji. Hopefully I said that right. Synthetics is one of the best communities in crypto and we're glad to be part of it. I am crazy bullish on Synthetics Network. I think it is going to be massive and I, I can't honestly give you a price point because... The whole derivatives market and things like that is so big. I've got no idea what it could go to, but I think this will be a great buy. I don't know if it's a great buy right now because all the altcoins have gone on such a run. I do think that there's going to be a retracement coming sometime soon, and some of them are getting. But look, this could be just a very small retracement before we go even higher again. So you have to make your own mind up. But either way, I really like synthetics. It's been one of my best performing assets. All right, we go down here. The raise comes during an especially productive period for synthetics. The team recently announced the launch of synth synthetic Tesla stock, and SNX was among the tokens uh, that filing show may be the next to be listed as a Grayscale Investment Trust. I think this is pretty much guaranteed. This is something that Grayscale will want to get into, and I think I read a, treat, a tweet somewhere not long ago that basically said they already have put in for it. So expect SNX to do extremely well throughout this bull run. And just in general, unless another platform comes out and outdoes them, and they're going to have a hard time because Synthetics Network has that first mover advantage, and also, you know, unless there's maybe a bug in the system that hasn't been found yet. They're the only two things that I can really see kind of heavily affecting synthetics. Obviously market corrections, but that's going to affect everything. It won't be like just randomly synthetics network will get hit by a market correction and no one else does. So hugely bullish on synthetics network. And I do think Grayscale are going to start a fund. And I think, you know, now could be a actually i think now would still be a good price in the really long term and again not financial advice just my personal opinion i do see this going to a couple hundred to a couple of thousand dollars in the future maybe quite a lot of a thousand dollars i'm just not sure if right now in the short term is going to be the best time to buy we could excuse me see uh you know a reasonable size correction of 30 40 percent but again i could be wrong i've been wrong before I've built a good position in Synthetics Network. I did sell 10% of my Synthetics tokens just 24, 48 hours ago. The price has just continued to go up. So, you know, I guess in some respects you could, you know, you could say, oh, that wasn't the best decision. But look, I got some good profit from it. The 10% that I sold almost got all my money back that I ever invested into Synthetics. So, yeah, I can't complain. I still do owe a few dollars in Synthetics. And I will likely continue to buy synthetics. I'll just be looking for good buy-in points. I'm going to wait for it not to be in the green. I'm going to wait to start to see it in the red before I start to buy. All right. Again, love to know your thoughts down below. What do you think about synthetics? Are you super bullish on synthetics? What kind of price target do you think you think that it can get to? You know, I've heard some four hundred. I've heard some thousands. I've had some one thousand. I've heard two thousand dollars. I really don't know. I think long term, this could be worth, you know, maybe even tens of thousands of dollars in, you know, four to 10 years time. And again, maybe even a whole lot more. Who knows? But I like what Synthetics is doing. Uh, I like everything that they've done. There hasn't been anything they've done that I haven't really liked. But again, that's my personal opinion, not financial advice. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all still on that game train. And I'll see you next time.